Okay. Uh, yay, this is our first episodes of... Uh, Cryptids and creeps. Okay, it was cryptids and creeps, not creeps and cryptids, right? Cryptids yeah. and creeps. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're like, what? I don't know. Uh, 20 seconds in and I've already messed it up. <laughs> but, okay. We can cut that out, but I probably won't. <laughs> uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm just extremely tired today. Same, but, like, always. <laughs> Gosh, this is going to be real fun for our listeners to, you know, listen to. Uh, but, oh well. So, okay, so this, um, if you're listening, which, I mean, no one is right now, but hopefully they will be. Hopefully. Um... Thank you for tuning in to our uh, pilot episode of Cryptids and Creeps. I'm Hannah. I am Cheyenne. And today we're starting off with a big one. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the lobotomy. And I'm going to be talking about little ghost stories of the Tower of London. Yeah. Uh... Albeit I have not organized anything well, but that's that's what I get for procrastinating a lot. Eh, that's fine. Whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? I mean, sure we've had like half a year to work on this, but who cares? It's fine. It's fine. Uh, so, okay. Question number one. What do you know about the lobotomy? Do you know anything about it? I know it takes an ice pick, your skull, and your brain. Um, I mean, yeah, something like that, I guess. That's, that's not too far off of uh, what it kind of devolved into uh, over the years. Um, so, the origins of the lobotomy. So, it uh, is a form of psychosurgery. And it uh, separates connections in the brain's prefrontal lobe. Uh, it was originally created by a Portuguese neurologist named Antonio Egas Moines, Mo Moines, Moines, God, I'm sorry, I'm probably butchering his name. I am butchering his name. It, there's no probably about it. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, he uh, created his surgery in 1935. Uh, it was originally called the prefrontal leucotomy, leucotomy. and this uh, this procedure won him the 1949 Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. Uh, it was originally used as a treatment for patients with schizophrenia, but uh, it began to decline in use after 1952 uh, until it was modified in 1960 for other illnesses uh, resistant to therapy or more like Violent stuff like uh, agitated depression, anxiety, uh, more like manic, more violence. Don't know what to do with these people's symptoms. So if you got a problem, don't live in this time period. Yeah, it. I mean, at at first it was generally supposed to be used for extreme cases, but as you will. Here in a little bit, uh, things changed, um, and things changed when a uh, physician named Walter Freeman stepped into the mix. He was a an American physician, uh, very well known, uh, and on September fourth, nineteen thirty six, he would perform his 
first lobotomy in the U.S. with his assistant, James Watts, on a woman named Alice Hood Hammett. Uh, basically, uh, Walter Freeman was kind of directing the surgery, and Watts, who was the actual surgeon, was doing the surgery. Uh, originally, it was definitely more surgical. They'd actually cut into the, uh, they actually cut into the skull, I believe right about the, where the temples are, and they'd, uh, basically cut out little spheres. They wouldn't, like, cut them out, but they'd kind of scoop out what looked like spheres, and then they leave them in there, but it essentially sever the connections. Yeah, it, no. They basically made like watermelon balls out of these people's heads. Oh. It was so. Okay, good. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> we had to move. Okay, that. Yay! Uh, where was I? Melon ball brain. Oh yeah. Oh geez. Melon ball brains. Yes. The the sentence everyone wants to hear. Um. So, uh, that was the, uh, very, very dumbed-down version of the original procedure. Uh, back to Alice, uh, Alice Hood Hammett, 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 I think. Uh, she was diagnosed with agitated depression. Uh, she twice attempted to withdraw consent before the surgery, uh, she uh supposed or she is supposed to have uh withdrawn her consent because of concerns over her hair. Uh she was afraid they'd have to shave her hair. Uh so twice they went through this thing and twice uh Freeman basically lied to her, telling her he well, I mean he yeah, basically telling her he'd spare what he could, but pretty much everything had to be shaved for her procedure. So, I don't know how ethical that is. Probably not very, but... Um, so, post-operatively, she reported feeling happy, but six days later, she experienced language difficulty, disorientation, and agitation. Uh... Despite this, she was sent home, and Dr. Freeman considered the surgery a big success. Uh, I think <laughs> this kind of really inflated his ego. Uh, so after his, uh, after his initial success, he uh, would go on to create his version of the leucotomy called the transorbital lobotomy. Uh, this technique in involved inserting an ice pick, uh, or it wasn't actually an ice pick, it was similar to an ice pick. Uh, it was a tool called an orbital class uh, between the upper eyelid and the eye. So right here in the like right here, the orbit, uh, and tapping it with a mallet to penetrate the orbital roof. After insertion, he would sweep the orbital clasp horizontally to uh, sever connections. Uh, but as you can, as you can guess, it was pretty haphazard. Uh, no really way to kind of see where you're going if you're in the eye. I mean, it just got weird. <laughs> um, he would uh, anesthetize? Oh god, I butchered that word. Uh, and anesthetize patients with a portable electro shock machine. Mm -hmm. This allowed him to perform the procedure in his office. No. Uh, and uh, Watts, his partner, if you remember, 
did not approve of the uh, did not approve of this me method. Actually, um, s with uh, with the transorbital lobotomy, it was technically not considered a surgery, so Watts wasn't even uh, involved kind of at this point. Uh, he was still partners with Freeman, but he wasn't really performing the surgery. Uh, in fact, one day uh, they sh had shared an office for a while, and uh, one day they had he had walked in on Freeman performing one of these in his in their shared office, and apparently after that he was just like, "No, I'm done. This is too crazy." Uh, another fact is uh, Freeman apparently his first tests were Pokey. apparently rather than testing this in any logical way he took i believe it was a grapefruit and or maybe it was an orange. Gosh, now I can't remember. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I should have done. He took a fruit of some kind. He took some sort of citrus and basically inserted an ice pick into like the ends, kind of just stirred it around and was like, "This is my surgery." Um, <laughs> it was. You fool! Yeah, that is not how we conduct things. Yeah, I. I mean, clearly, you can you can see why Watts was uncomfortable with this, to say the least. Uh, so, as you can guess, the outcomes of this surgery were very, very inconsistent. Uh, some, rep <clears throat> some patients uh, were mixed. Uh, some would seem to get better, but then... Uh, end up worse than where they started. Some died from the uh, procedure, quote unquote procedure. Uh, some would later commit suicide. Some were left severely brain damaged. And some successful patients were able to go home or s stayed hospitalized, but were considered more manageable. So not as many violent outbursts, which, I mean, ma makes sense when you've had something swishing around in your brain that's not supposed to happen. Um, but, as I said, the outcomes were very inconsistent, even more so than the original. Uh, and it led to a lot of negative sentiment against Freeman, as well as his work. Uh, and many medical professionals criticized him and his methods, as well as the very liberal use of his procedure. Um, as the years progressed, uh, he'd get less and less strict with who he chose to uh, give the uh, procedure. I keep saying that, but uh, in fact, one of his patients, his youngest patient, was a 12-year-old boy who I believe he's still alive today, uh, but uh, he has reported, he, he's done a lot of talks about it and how uh, he, there was nothing wrong with him, his stepmother pretty much just hated him. No. Yeah. Uh, and so she brought him in. Well, she brought him into several doctors and was like, hey, uh, can you fix him? And the doctors were like, dude, he's 12. But then uh, she brought him into Freeman and Freeman's like, oh yeah, I can... I can do this procedure. No! Yeah. And as a 12-year-old boy. Uh, yeah. It was... And, like, the article I was reading, the things like, inattentiveness, refusing to go to bed, like, mood swings, like, that's a 12-year-old, not... I mean, it's just... He just really 
Um, just didn't, as long as he could, he, he built himself this, like, very hero persona in his own mind. Like, even after he was, uh, banned from practicing, he would, uh, continue basically doing these huge road trips across America to visit his patients, and he'd always, like, if anyone ever asked about him, he'd have, like, a box of Christmas cards from the families of his former patients to show, hey, that you know, they appreciate this. And, you know, I'm sure some did. It's, it's very hard with, like, mental illness because it can severely affect people. Uh, and some, a lot of, there are families that have a very hard time. And I mean, but then there comes the ethics and, um, I mean, even with the original surgery, there are some ethical, uh, debates, but I mean, what Freeman was doing he helped some, yes, there's no doubt about that, but you can't, he destroyed a lot of people in doing that, uh, in doing his procedure and doing it so freely. Uh, so, yeah, that has been the uh, gist of the lobotomy. There are, I mean, there are there's so much more you could go into, I mean, like, where, uh, Moines, Moines, oh God, I still can't figure out how to pronounce it, where he got his idea, because, I mean, that story's pretty interesting, too, uh, and, you know, the effects, I, I'd suggest, uh, looking up the procedure, reading up on it, uh, I can't remember the boy's name, just give me a second, I gotta find his name, because I know he has some stuff on it, I love how my family, Howard, Howard Dully, uh, Howard Dully, yeah, so when he was one of the youngest patients, uh, and he has talked about it, uh, he has wrote, written uh, a memoir, so I'd suggest looking him up, and, I mean, obviously he's the one who went through it, and, I mean, this is the first episode, sorry if it's not as well researched as it should have been, hopefully. Next, ne next time. Yeah, next episode. Sorry, this is the pilot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is our pilot. It's our so special. So very special to it's us. It's so special. It's 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 my pilot and I get to pick the research. <laughs> Sorry. Memes. Memes. Ah, uh, memes. I don't know. My 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 I mean do vines count as memes? Like, I think so. Yeah. Okay, they're funny videos. My favorite meme, then my favorite vine meme is the demon one. <laughs> you, do you know that one? Maybe. Uh, it's the hey hey I'm going to the store. You want anything? The souls of the innocents. A bagel. No. no! Two bagels. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Okay, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I'm talking about my favorite meme. Uh, maybe I'll cut that out, maybe I'll get lazy. I don't know. Oh. Laziness equals who knows what. Yeah, I mean... It can equal anything. It's my mental breakdown, I get to pick the music. <laughs> it's my it's my podcast, I, pick, I get to pick it's how... It's my we... Google app look have open i get to pick how many tabs are open <laughs> <laughs> a million that's always the answer it's a million and there's always music playing somewhere <laughs> i will find it which tab is it uh anyway you want to start us off with the uh tower of london um this is a very 
uh, interesting topic because was it, it must it was it'd be two years ago now we actually visited the Tower of London. You got to see the ravens. Yep, and you, where a, a little beheading spot. Yep, I got to see where Anne Boleyn was beheaded, and I got to see the crown jewels. Yeah, the, only that. Just that. We had like an hour there, and you spent like all day waiting. All all that time waiting yeah. in a line just to see the jewels. I got to see some swords, so that was an upside. Yeah, I got to see some uh, m- metal dudes. <laughs> oh gosh. Statues to look like guards made out of metal. and It was cool, okay? Just believe me. It was two years ago. I can't remember fucking anything. <laughs> Okay, so I guess the first story I'm going to start off with. Henry VIII's armor. Now, with with this armor, we got reports of, like, the guards having, like, horrible sensations when they're repo- when they're <laughs> when they're patrolling. Yes, that's English. Patrolling. <laughs> yes. English. Uh, guards had reported horrible sensations when patrol- uh, patrolling patrolling the place that had Henry's armor. And like, what kinds of sensations? Just, like, feelings? Like, like a sense of dread. This, and, like, different piece, people also reported having senses of dread and chills and that stuff. But you also got people... Feeling like they're being crushed alive, suffocated, and like they're just being strangled. It's like, oh, great, King Henry's being a dick. As always. As always. When did he stop? Not in the afterlife. Nope. Nope. Not, not one bit. And then, next one The White Lady. Ooh. She's said to haunt the White Tower. Although, I feel I have no idea where the White Tower is. Yeah, I don't. I don't think we saw that. I mean, I'm sure we would have seen something about the White Lady. I would have seen something about the White Lady if I had seen it. Yeah. But no, I didn't. Okay. But it said that her presence is announced by the smell of cheap perfume. Axe body spray. <laughs> She's just wearing axe. It's yes. like, ooh, my boyfriend got it was I got my boyfriend's sweater on. That's that's why she's all in white. She just has a giant white sweater on. It's her boyfriend's sweater. It's just she's it's soaked in the smell of Axe body spray. She's so not it just drags. She's not even a ghost. She's just a woman in her boyfriend's sweater drenched in axe body spray. <laughs> like, nope, she doesn't exist. Not not in this world. Okay, sorry. There's also, like, reports of being tapped on the shoulder only for said person to turn around and see nothing but a wisp of white. A wisp of white, huh? Yep. So, do they have any clue who this lady might be, or...? Nope. Okay. Just random lady. Just random person. I mean, enough people died in there. I suppose it's hard to keep track. To event Anne Boleyn. Oh, oh, so, oh someone in a white dress? I know exactly who wore that white ghost dress. Ooh. I don't know. It was um, Lady Anne something or other, yeah. She, you know, she wore exactly that cheap perfume that, you know... I know, even though it's, you know, from olden it's times. King Henry's like, get me out of here. She has a ton of cheap perfume on. Let Wait, me leave. How do they even know it's cheap perfume? Like, it could have been very expensive in the time. Like, what do we know? Maybe I she's, think- like, wearing super expensive perfume and we're just dumb. We don't really wear perfume much, so. Well, I know, but, like... Who's describing it as cheap perfume is what I'm asking. Like it's maybe it's like a super strong smelling perfume that doesn't really smell all that great. Like Axe body spray. Yeah. But like I'm I'm just saying, like, we don't know if it's actually cheap. Like it could have been super expensive. Like, I mean, how expensive was 
I, I mean, I guess pro probably pretty expensive because I don't think you'd have a peasant using perfume. Yeah. I think that was more of an upper class thing. I, I guess even among fancy things, there are still cheap ones. So lower class nobles can feel like, oh, I fit in. But like, sorry, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, how do you tell? Okay, sorry. Okay. And then our final story one I managed to get a little maybe too much on. Just too many facts. It's just a timeline of it. The princes in the tower. No! <laughs> Our little boys. My babies. I love them. Well, I mean, they would probably have grown up to be horrible people, like, you know, everyone in their age. But, like, still, they were so innocent as children. Yeah, but, like, they didn't deserve to die as kids. Their parents were, like, good people. They're, like, nice people, apparently. Oh. I mean, like, as nice as anyone can be compared. Well, okay. Sorry. I'll but their uncle was a dick. Yeah. Yeah. That's... That goes with them. you, sir. I blame you for their disappearance, you duke of Gloucester. Gloucester. Whatever it's pronounced. Gloucester? <laughs> Worcestershire. Worcester duke of Worcestershire. Mmm. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's Gloucester. Gloucester. I'm sorry, anyone who lives in Britain, where we're absolutely butchering this. People who live in Britain, people who live in Portugal, and people who just who live in America. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the, even people who are native. I'm sorry to anyone listening to this who has listened for the past twenty seven minutes. Oh goodness. Well, probably a little less once I cut this, but you know. So. The two princes are Edward and Richard. Edward was 12 and Richard was 9. <laughs> They're so small. Babies. Just baby boys. And they disappeared in 1483. They were sent to the tower. Sent, I say, in quotation marks. You jerk. <laughs> sent to the Tower of London by their uncle who was like yeah I'll take them I, I was trusted by their father and then you continue to behead a person who was accompanying Edward to the tower oh dang it <laughs> so we're, they were like all alone in the tower then yeah there had there is one reported sighting uh, by this dude. What is this dude's name? What Did, did I ever even write it? Uh, Dominic Mancini, I think. Mancini, okay. Probably. But Dominic, he said that the princes were seen more rarely behind the bars and windows until at length they ceased to appear. Oh wait, are we talking about ghosts or like, like them? They actually, like actual sightings of them as alive. alive. Oh my god, that's so sad. They just, they basically locked them up until like no one cared, and then they got rid of them. They're like, oh yeah, see the princes are there, and no one cared, and then they're like, okay, time to kill these boys. I was like, no. God, that's so sad. <laughs> I want to go and hug them. Like, I want to go back in time and rescue them. I wish I could. And then, like, ghost sightings started in the 15th century of these two boys. These two innocent children. Boys. Boys, I say. Of the mm. Boys. And, like, it's sad because, like... Pretty much every picture of them is, like, the younger one cowering behind the older one. Like, yeah, like they don't have any happy pictures. It's all of them cowering, I swear. And you got, like, Richard hugging his mother in one of the paintings. It's so sad. It all depicts the kids as innocent. Oh, well, I mean, they're 
12, 12 was yeah, it? Yeah, like, more, 12 and 9. So. More, like, way more innocent than your typical 12 and 9 year old. I mean, when they, you get to a 12 year old, in the paintings they kind of looked similar in age, but when you hit 12, you're looking different from a 9 year old at that point. Well, I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, this is olden times, so, like, eh. I don't know, everyone died at, like, what, 20? <laughs> like, 30. 30. So. Either from, like, who, oh. disease, or murder. Yeah. Or, or just plague. hunger. The plague. The plague. I think... I can't remember. Okay, I don't think the black was around it this time. I think that was before this. A sickness of some sort. A, a plague. A plague. A plague. Not the plague, just a plague. One of the many. Yeah, one of the many, many plagues. But nobody knows what happened to the two princes at all whatsoever. There's nothing leading to that. Like, yeah. no closure. I've I've heard that they might have been smothered with a pillow. Yeah. And do you have do you have the bone story? Um I think it was something about bones being discovered. Yeah. Of a thirteen year old and a ten year old. Yeah. Babe do you do you want me to I sure go Okay. Ahead. I don't mean I know you, and I know how you know. I, I, I didn't mean. I don't mean to hijack your story. I, but it's okay. uh, this, I was watching a documentary about the Tower of London. So, uh, and this is fresh in my mind that basically they did, they they found some bones, and they I believe they interned them, interred them as the bones of the boys but no one's exactly sure whether they are and uh basically the this could have changed i guess but basically the government won't let anyone do any testing on them so as far as anyone they're basically schrodinger's bones they they're both their bones and both not their bones at the same time as long as they're not tested i guess so yeah uh, but yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. I feel like, I mean, it really depends, because I can't remember how long ago they found him, so. Like, if it were closer to modern day, I could believe they're probably the boys' bones, just because I think it'd be a better judge, but, like, if it were, like, I don't know, even, like, 60s time then I'd be like mm, I'm not sure because they've gotten they've done some pretty bad mess ups with I mean I who's to say like who's, aging aging from bones just looking at them is you know pretty hard because um I mean I, kids bones are different I'm sorry bones you, are small they are small but like Eventually, you get to the point where they kind of look like mini humans. Mini, I mean, mini adults. Kids are mini, mini humans. Adults. <laughs> oh, sorry, babies aren't actually human. They uh, are alien creatures. Yeah, you don't become a human until you're an adult. But uh, there are many Mothmans or Sasquatches. Um, <laughs> baby Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. That was probably me as a baby. <laughs> Um, uh, sorry, folks, you couldn't see this, but I just dabbed. Yes, she did. Something went wrong when I was created. That's my new catchphrase, is something went wrong when I was created. And I exist without any prior knowledge. Absolutely none. Uh, so I think you're gonna go in and talk about sightings, or? Oh, yeah. Only real reported sighting that I got an article that I found that I kind of questioned because I didn't find much just this supposed sighting of two guards hearing the sounds of children giggling mm. not giggling giggling mm. 
Words. Words. It's like, oh gosh, what time is it? It's 9.45 and we're already this. We're already like this. Oh my gosh, we should, next time we're recording earlier. Yeah. Probably have like something prepared. Yeah. I mean, we're also recording this after a a four hour D&D session, so. Every Wednesday after D&D. So we're, we're. We're making it entertaining for the listeners, because, like, um, imagine if we were, like, just, like, oh, yeah, yeah, these kids were killed, and may they may or may not be seen, like, at least we're making it, I kind of feel terrible using that as an example, using these two kids oh. being killed as an example, I'm okay. sorry, I love creepy things, but it doesn't mean I'm, like, w- weird about it, like, yeah. joyful, like, I, I do honestly feel bad for them. They were tiny babies who didn't deserve this. Mm-hmm. No kid deserves a death like that. Yeah. A mysterious death where nobody knows where you, what happened to you. But uh, that's what this podcast is for. Sorry, mysterious deaths. Probably going to go through some of my favorite mysterious deaths. One of them happens to be the boy in the box mystery, which I'll get to probably eventually. The boy in the box? We'll go, we'll we'll go, go over, over that the- later. Yeah. Maybe maybe I'll do that next time for you. Speaking of next time, that is all that I had. Oh, that's that's it. Yes. You know, other things didn't sound as interesting. Yeah, like they just sounded stupid and a little bit, a little bit stupid. I mean, a little bit. Those are also kind of fun, but yeah, I get. It. I mean, if you're doing one with multiple stories, then yeah. Although I mean, you're... there was like one about some demon bear. Uh, no, you should have done the demon bear. I didn't. There was too little on it. Well, I mean, I-, I assume it's supposed to be like the ghost of one of the zoo animals. Probably just possess a zoo animal. Ha ha ha! Or, demon bear. I don't know. Was bear baiting popular at that time? I I know it was popular for a while. I just. I think it would have been pretty... I mean... I mean, as as long as the tower was up, there was probably some point in time where they baited bear. Because, you know, that tower was in use for a very long time. Yeah. Uh... Well... I don't know. Uh, anything else to talk about? Uh... Not that I could possibly, probably think of. At this moment? Oh, <laughs> by the way, unfortunately, no no scary experiences at the Tower of London. Absolutely none. Except, except maybe the prices, a hey. <laughs> And the amount of people. Oh my god, there are so oh, many people. too many people. I mean, that's fair. It's a historic landmark. I mean, but I sure as hell was not going to wait around to see some stinky old jewels. <laughs> don't arrest me. Queen Elizabeth, don't arrest me, please. She can't. She's in Britain. We are in America. <laughs> we have stupid rights. Uh, we have, quite literally, some stupid rights. Yeah. Uh, 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 I guess this is where we should end the first episode of Cryptids and Creeps Yay! Pilot. Pilot episode. It was very bad. I hope you'll tune in with us the next, next week. Next week? Yeah, next week. Probably next week unless someone gets sick or someone goes on vacation. Yeah. It's summer, baby! God, I hate that I just did that. <laughs> I can take that out, but I probably I'm doing... I understand why, like... So many times, like, in podcasts, people are like, oh, I'll take that out and post. And then they just don't. <laughs> because they're just too funny. It's just, I mean, I'm not sure if that was funny, but I'm just going to leave it in because I want you fans to know the real me. <laughs> we want you to know the raw, uncut, stupid stuff of us. But this is yeah. it. Yep. Oh, uh, hey, uh, Jenna, if you're listening, I know, (laughs) I know I've probably sent this to you. Well, I mean, if you're listening, then I've probably sent this to you, but sup, 
<laughs> I don't know why I said that. Because uh, you're probably going to be the only one listening. That's that's the truth of the matter. Minus the few stragglers that come on in and be like, oh, what's this? Hmm, that's weird. It's well, awful. They'll probably see your cover art and be like, oh, and then they'll get in and they're like, oh. <laughs> but I guess we'll leave here. Um, yeah, uh, if you've uh, listened this long, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. I promise we'll get better eventually. Okay, I'm not going to promise that. It will take time. It will take a lot of time. Um, I don't know. If, if you're listening in the future, feel free to skip these first episodes <laughs> and go to, like, later ones. If we, well, we will continue the, doing this. Like, this is just a fun project. Uh, low expectations, high hopes for this little personal project. Um, okay, I'm going to sign week. off. Uh, stay spooky. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you. Bye-bye.